On today's episode, I'm going to discuss why you should return to a location time and time and time again. You're always going to get a shot and it's always going to be different. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today, as I broke my uh, tripod, today you join me. Um, I'm on the coast of Cork and I'm in a place called Ballycotton. And Ballycotton is a place that I've come to many, many times. You can see with my tripod from all the sea salt that I've come here many, many times and always gotten a shot. And I don't think today is going to be any different. The advantage that I have is that the tide is going out. So I decided to come here. I'm here for sunset. Now, what I found here as I walked along here is just this avenue of a rock and you can't get here obviously when the water is so high, but because the water is low, it's enabling me now to be able to get out into that. So I'm going to grab my first shot here of this iconic location that has never failed me and hopefully it won't fail me either today. Let's go. Now, one of the reasons I keep coming back to this location is because the diversity in the rocks is immense. Now, the first spot that I come to, you can see this nice leaning, natural leaning line going out, plus this rock that's down below me as well here. And what I'm doing is I'm waiting for the water to come in and come towards me. Now, my settings at the moment here, I am at one eighth of a second. I'm at F16. I have my polarizer on and I also have my six stop filter as well on. So it's still quite bright. But one of the advantages that I really like about this location is if you notice the lighthouse, it's going to be the main star of the show in every image and it retains the light for the longest time. Now, the reason by the way that I'm at these settings is because I'm more or less in darkness here and the sky is so bright. So I'm taking my exposure for the highlights, which is the brightest part of the image. And then I can bring up the detail later in post with my raw file. But when I'm taking the shot here, I'm waiting for water just to come below me. And when it comes below me, it adds some fantastic texture into the image. So I think that I'm going to get some really nice shots from here anyway. Here's the first one now, and we are one hour and a half away from sunset. So. There's no clouds in the horizon at the moment. I'm fingers crossed that there might be some that are coming towards me. There's very little wind here as well today, so I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, here's the first one anyway here, the first test shot, and then I'll talk to you after that. After I took my last shot, I looked around and you know what, something's very unusual is that the water is so calm and there's an area in front of me here that is extremely calm. So even though the waves are breaking outside, they're not even breaking on the shore here in front of me. So I said I'd take the opportunity to be able to get my camera right down low and kind of fill the frame with this smoothness of water. Now, I'm going to probably take a couple of different types of exposures. I'm going to take a standard one to keep some ripples in the water. I'm going to take probably a one second exposure. And then I'm going to put on my um, 10 stop and I'm going to really smooth out that water. Now, I also have my polarizer on as well because I want to be able to see down into the rocks that are below me. I'll give you a look at what I'm looking at here and I'll talk you through my composition. One sec now. So camera here is set up. I don't know if you can see this screen. Uh, maybe if I just turn it back this way. So now, no, you only see my reflection. Okay, so basically you can see that the water here is, and I'm so low to the water as it is anyway, and the water here is almost flat cam, but you've got the lighthouse that's just up there then as well on the distance. Now I'm framing it that the lighthouse will be pretty much like this 
almost out of the frame and the majority of what I want to see is down in here. But what I'll do actually is I'm going to switch over to my other camera and I'm going to give you a look at the um, power that comes when you're using your polarizer because it's going to take away all the glare and reveal all of these rocks that are underneath here as well. So yeah, I'll cut over into this camera now. So as you can see here, it's not as tight as that on the actual photo because the video, the camera does video in 16.9. But you can see here below me, see these rocks that are there? Now if I twist my polarizer, you see that there's a sheen coming back in relation to those. But as I turn my polarizer, that darkens up completely. And then you can see right in to the rocks that are below me. And then with the lighthouse at the top, everything basically is leading towards that which is my star of the show. You might be able to see some of the waves that are breaking out there, but then look at it in front of me, it's almost calm. So I'm going to take advantage here and take the opportunity while I can. I know the tide is going out, so this is going to get lower and lower anyway as it is. But right now, I'm liking this shot. The sun is coming back out as well now on the lighthouse, which would be perfect because it will sit nice and proud on the top of the frame. So yeah, I'll take these different types of shots and I'll show you then what they are after this. Now this is extremely unusual because the water here is protected by these rocks. So the first shot I got was closer to you. I moved over here now and what I'm doing is effectively framing up the entire scene by these rocks that are covered in algae using the polarizer to see in here and I think it's a lot cleaner image. The other one had a bit of a rock stopping it. When I first spotted this I thought it was going to be kind of a leading S-curve up to the lighthouse but it's not. What it actually is is a tale of two scenes effectively. Here, completely flat, seeing into these rocks, there's loads of periwinkles and sea urchins, or not sea urchins, limpets uh, underneath me here. The texture in these would be really nice and plus I've got the lighthouse as well that's now being still illuminated by the sun. I'll give you a look at this shot actually here. I went for a 30 second shot. I'm at uh, F11 and my ISO is at 100 using my polarizer and using my 10 stop as well. But yeah, really unusual so I said I'm going to take the opportunity here to grab this shot. Here it is. Now, for this next one, still in the same kind of area with these flat areas of water, I moved over and now I've got a closer look at some of these rocks that are covered in the kelp. And I've gone into portrait orientation, again, using my polarizer to take away the uh, sheen from in front of me. But the area that I have has been framed nicely looking up towards the lighthouse. Now, the challenge that I have is I need to be extra careful because the um, water is coming in from the left hand side here from the waves that are breaking over in the distance. So every so often I get movement in this water. So I'm having to time my shot just like right now when there is no movement so that I can see right into that and it can be calm. There will I think still be a bit of movement in the kelp that's moving in the water. I can't avoid that. But I definitely think this is going to be a, a nice shot as well. Great because like I said from the outset the lighthouse is still illuminated and I'm in darkness here so that enables me to be able to get that longer exposure but also I love the fact that that's so bright and then this will be so dark below it but yeah I think that's going to be a lovely shot. Portrait orientation 30 seconds and I am at F10 ISO 100. Here's this next shot.
I was putting the camera back up actually and I noticed the framing that I had you on there when I was recording the last piece. So I said, okay, I'm going to take that shot as well. Now settings more or less remain the same, the light hasn't changed. However, I'm at uh, F9, 30 seconds and I'm at ISO 100, I'm at 16 mil and I'm framing these rocks that are here below and then these ones over here too with the island just on the left hand side as well of the image. So yeah, I think it's going to be nice anyway. They're totally different to what I normally would get here. So I might as well take this opportunity and see how they turn out. So yeah, give you a look at this next one now. Now I've come back over to where I started from today and I love the surface on these rocks here. It's almost lunar like. Such a pity actually that I wasn't here a bit earlier. I could have had the water coming in around those but it's now gone out past the same rock that was using as my leading line earlier on. But even on that there's phenomenal texture as well. Now I have changed around as well with my polarizer because something I have to be very conscious of is I want the sheen that's on this rock over here. If I deaden down that it loses its glow. But what I've done is I've moved it to be able to come to the water that's on the left hand side of the frame as well. And I think that will be nice because it's going straight out again to my star of the show which is the lighthouse that you can just see up here. Settings for this same as before actually so it hasn't changed. 30 seconds f8 ISO 100 and I think I really like this because the mixture of colors that are there you've got barnacles as well on the top of this rock really really smooth rock and then you've got this green kind of emerald yellowy strange color actually um, maybe jade is the color um, rock that's going out so it's starting from the right hand side leading you out up to the lighthouse then that's on the top of the frame in the top left hand corner give you a look at this now Now something I mentioned before is the importance of changing your perspective and the majority of the shots that I've taken in this location have been the camera more or less at eye height and I've talked before about having eye level limitations. You should always change your perspective because it can change the entire scene. So the rocks that are below me here are part of the frame but they're in the lower part of the frame and then I've got the lighthouse that's on the horizon. But watch what happens here and I'll give you a look, I'll spin this round. So if we are now at this level and we keep an eye in regards to the, the, the camera which is here, okay? Now if I drop down lower, look at these rocks on the right hand side. They now become even more of the frame. All I have to do effectively is move over here and then frame that shot with the lighthouse as well. And I think that will be uh, a nice shot as well. I'm going to swap out here because I think my Seascape tripod is almost at end of life. All of the uh, clamps are all seized up. So I'm going to go on to my video tripod here that I normally use because I can drop that down low. And I'm going to try and fill the frame with this rock below here. I'm going to go for the same settings I think while they'll have the light, but I think that will be a completely different shot also. Actually, let me know in the comments which image you prefer, the one that I've just taken before this or the next one that I'm going to show you right now. I've just completed the time lapse there. It took me 10 minutes. It's going to be 40 seconds long. So you'll see the last of the light just before it left me. So I'll give you a look at my time lapse now.
Right, so the light is gone, coat is on, the light is off of the uh, lighthouse anyway, and I don't think I'm going to get any more color than what I have here at the moment, starting to fade. But I, nonetheless, I still think I enjoyed the couple of shots that I would have gotten there, particularly over in that pool area, which I think was totally different, and I really like these as well here. But overall, Ballycotton, once again, hasn't disappointed. It's a stunning place to be, and I think, you know, hope, I hope that you've enjoyed coming along as well to experience it. If you've never been here, I'd recommend to come to Valley Cotton because you'll always get a shot. So thank you very much as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If it's your first time on the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, Schlange Fall.